What's going on guys? Wayne Grayson here for Utility Expo 2021. Obviously we are here in the K-Lot of this year's show and we are at the Felco booth to check out the company's latest attachments. Specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about wheel compactor attachments, which are obviously very important, can make a big difference in terms of cost and efficiency on a utility site, especially with trench backfilling. Uh, now we're gonna be talking about the traditional wheel compactor, uh, with your kind of standard kind of height of tamp design, but we're also gonna be talking about this piece. It's a three in one uh, attachment that Felco has introduced that not only allows you to do static compacting with that kind of, uh, with a very kind of like recessed tamp design on the drum, but it also allows you to do uh, vibratory compacting with a plate that's built into the All back. Right guys, so like we said, we're here at the Felco booth, Utility Expo 2021. We're standing here with Sean Papps. Sean is the CEO of Felco Attachments. And Sean, we're standing here in front of a, uh, a new wheel compactor that, that you guys have uh, put out on the market. Now, I understand that you know, th this is one of those tools that's, you know, maybe not necessary for, for most types of work, but it's, it's, it's a nice thing to have for a lot of guys out there. So kind of take us through uh, th this, in this particular attachment. Yeah, this is our Felco wheel compactor. This is a 24 inch wide version. This is designed for basically uh, backfilling and we're compacting most soils that clay-based soils. Um, really the design and the pads on there are work to, the work to knead the, comp the soils into what you need to hit compaction in the 90 percentile range. Um, and then we've got the scraper systems in there to clear the material as it goes through the, the wheel so it doesn't bind up the wheel. Um, this one's built for the 20 to 30,000 range machines, but we do build them up to 100,000 pound capabilities. When we were talking earlier, you were, you were kind of taking me through like one of the kind of defining features of, of, this, of this attachment is, is, that, is that kickstand in the back. Tell us a little bit about that. That was kind of a neat discovery. Typically there's on the back, there's a leveling blade was its true name, but it became apparent with quick couplers that it was nice to get it out of the dirt and off the ground sure. so operators could more easily detach it and reattach it to their coupler system. So. It's, uh, yeah, lovingly referred to as a kickstand now, but guys do use it to push and pull material into a trench and level out a, a lift of dirt before they then use the compactor to uh, get their compaction. One of the things that we talked about is that that you guys have put a lot of time uh, and attention into making sure that, that these attachments work with tilt rotators. Take us through some of those design considerations and, and what you would need uh, you know, to, to, to do if, if, if you were interested in kind of pairing this thing with a tilt rotator. You bet. Now we're really excited to see tilt rotators come to the states and their capabilities and it really opened up a new market for a product which is a nice thing to have happen yeah. for you're like wow that's another opportunity for us right because tilt rotators are amazing the the way they can grab turn and right now typically operators are just uh, one dimensional you know back yeah. and forth uh, now you can tilt it onto a slope uh, you can tilt it uh, across and and compact that way so it's really been exciting and really the only adaption we've had to make was the nice thing about the tilt rotators is a lot of them have standardized uh, ear assemblies, so it's their S dimensions, and this one has a wedge lock. Other than that, any steel wrist, NCON, rototilt group, we can build a top for that bolts onto this, and then they'd be able to grab and go. So there's no other connection issues that happen there. And then if you ever did want to use it on a traditional coupler, you, know, you could just get another top and bolt that on, and away you'd go. And you mentioned, you know, kind of some of the, you know, with the different angles and the ability to kind of rotate and everything with the tilt rotator, but uh, take us a little deeper on, on how attaching, you know, a wheel compactor to a tilt rotator kind of changes the way that you can use the machine. Like, how does it kind of expand even further on this attachment's uh, capability? In Europe, they're used primarily vibratory compaction. A lot of our clay-based soils is really going to be uh, a needed tool if a lot of these contractors not only do landscaping, rock placement, but they are getting more into utilities. And it's great because they can actually work around existing utilities. Yeah. And they, you know, it's those, the buckets can scoop out, it's just like your hand. Yeah, you can right. work it out, work the dirt, and then to backfill these, then this is a lot faster than a vibratory comp plate compactor version, which you just gotta work more consistently. This is a, a faster tool and it seamlessly goes on with the uh, tilt rotators 
and there's no other connections needed. So, you know, I know that with Felco attachments, that's, that's one of the things that you guys kind of take pride in is that, you know, maintenancing this thing is not going to be a headache, that it's going to last a long time, and that those two kind of things kind of go hand in hand together. So take us I to that. I appreciate that. Yeah. We have developed this sealed journal bearing system. So it is internally lubricating. So once we fill it with oil at the factory, yeah, there's nothing to grease on this. And that is a huge time saver and it risks uh, less risk for damage to the wheel itself. And that's probably our biggest competitive advantage to other competitors is they have to grease those. And if they don't get yeah. greased or if they get damaged, they're very expensive. If this is a five year warranty. That's if they're getting greased at all. If they get greased <laughs> at all. And, that, and so <laughs> rental groups love these because they know when they send something on rent, it's probably not going to get greased as well. So the longevity of that, we have a five year warranty on that, but we expect a decade of use before you really have issues based on our warranty records that we've found. And we think it's a better tool. It's going to save you more time in the ground and less time in the shop. So again, in the Felco booth, we're here with Aaron Kellum. Aaron is actually the president at Felco, uh, um, among other things. He's also the lead of research and development. He's a perfect person uh, to talk about this particular prototype, which Aaron, remind me what, what you guys are calling it. It's, it's a pretty long name. It's a three-in-one vibratory compaction roller. Your compaction drum down here with a, with a low-profile tamp design. Uh, you've got a vibratory plate on the back, and obviously you can do static compaction or you can do this drum in tandem with a vibratory compaction. So that's how you get the three-in-one. Now, Aaron, we, we were talking about this attachment uh, a, a little bit ago. It's, it's kind of main competitor is gonna be a trench compactor. Uh, take us through why having this attachment on the excavator, uh, do you guys think this is a, a, a better solution rather than kind of like a remotely driven trench compactor? So trench compactors, they have their place. They work very well. They're, they're very prolific in the industry. Right. But there's never been an alternative to them, which is kind of was the genesis of this idea here for this product. Sure. What we came up with was a solution for a need where you probably have an excavator on the job site, and you could use this on the excavator rather than having to have a second piece of equipment. And plus, it's not driven by a diesel motor. It's driven by the excavator's hydraulic energy source. So. Right. It's got a hydraulic vibratory compactor in there, which is driven off of the machine's hydraulic system. We've got travel limiters here, so you don't overstretch your isolator pads. That's your most expensive wear item there. And then we have our sealed journal bearing axle system here down below to add the durability there, which is as durable as you're gonna find in the industry for a compaction wheel. We feel this product can be an alternative to that trench roller product at a more cost-effective position and a, a more reliable long-term lower maintenance cost option. And, and for the operator, right? I mean, like excavator operation is all about feel, right? It's, it's all about that connection with the attachment, with the ground. Uh, this definitely returns in terms of this application and the compaction, it definitely returns that feel back to the back to the operator. But the kind of like problem with with putting the attachment on the machine that you and I were talking about earlier is that sometimes you know you know you know guys that are used to just doing kind of vibration maybe they 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 throw this attachment on the machine and they and they press down too hard and you're not getting any vibration. You mentioned this limiter. How does that limiter kind of make sure that there's not too much downward force being applied into the drum? Excellent question. We do two things here with the combination of our mounting beam here and the travel limiter that you can see here, that allows you to go just under the, half the diameter of these isolator pads, which is what the manufacturers recommend. So you can push that down, it'll stretch, but you won't stretch it too far and prematurely wear those isolator pads, and those are $250 a piece or more. So if you tear those up, you're talking about $1,000 to repair them plus downtime on your equipment. The other thing that we kind of talked about uh, before here was this was this low profile tamp design. Obviously, it, this is you know this is quite a bit of a different than the kind of the standard tamp uh, design and kind of layout. Why why did you guys kind of go with this on this drum and rather than the uh, the standard kind of layout? Our standard wheel compactors have about a four inch tamping pad height, yeah. and they work very very well. But they do kind of chew up that top layer of soil where you're compacting. This product gets used in more of a almost a, I would call it a finish situation where you want to have a finished grade on your your compaction it allows you to have bite on the soil to roll while not putting too much of an indentation in the top as you're rolling along so that's why we came up with that 
What, what, you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier on on, on the wheel compactor was the the you know that that kind of tools uh, you know uh, capability to be attached to a, a tilt rotator. I thought that was interesting. Our conversation earlier about kind of like the the physics problems around kind of putting one of these attachments onto a tilt rotator, and it and it mostly has to do with kind of like the fact that this is hydraulically driven, right? So so what is kind of like the the physics problem that that at, at this point anyway, it's kind of like a, a problem to solve in the future. That would that would kind of keep this uh, this attachment from right now being compatible with use on a tilt rotator. Tilt rotators with the hydraulic connections that they have and all of the different routings that you have with that line, they build back pressure. Yeah. And what we've found in our testing is that that back pressure is about three times higher than what the shaft seals are on the vibratory unit itself. So obviously they don't last very long. They blow. You end up with your system being down. Your motor might be bad, you might have to replace bearings. It, sure. it just doesn't work. Right. Uh, the solution for that is a case drain, right. but a case drain, um, you have to have a, a uh, excavator that's plumb for a case drain, and then also, if you do a case drain as it's designed and tends, running it right back to the tank, right. you lose all of your mobility that yeah. you get with a tilt rotator. So yeah. we haven't quite overcome that problem yet. We did mention that this was three in one. You can do static compaction, vibratory to the drum compaction, but then you've also got a plate on the back of this thing. Yeah. It's actually pretty flexible in terms of kind of the things that it can maneuver around. When we were prototyping it, we were just, we were kind of using it as a kickstand, right? Just to have it here so you could grab it, yeah, sure. right? It'd be easy, okay, no big deal. Yeah. But then they started using it to actually compact. I'm like, well, heck, we better right. make something out of that. And then furthermore, we were watching them use it in the field for our prototype testing and they were running up against like utility lines that were coming vertically up out of the soil. Sure. And what they would do is they would tilt that up to that plate compactor and they'd compact right up next to that utility line coming up cool. with the plate compactor and they could get in a very tight area with a much lower risk than you would with a with a standard rolling operation. I do want to finish up on on maintenance here in just a second but I think that you know obviously when you come to a show like this and you get to kind of be around tools um, like this with this machine here uh, being launched and everything it's just kind of cool to get to come and see uh, some of these tools that that you know when you put it on the machine for the first time it, it, the operator immediately starts, their, their brain starts to tick around mm -hmm. all the things that they're going to be able to do with this thing now and how it's going to save them time. Uh, so, so very, very cool design and, and idea around this uh, uh, in terms of returning that control to the operator rather than have him kind of re remotely controlling a, a, a different device. Take us through kind of some of the, the big maintenance keys to this, to this attachment. Uh, the big maintenance keys. With a, any of our products, make sure you don't have any leaks. If you have a leak, something went wrong. Right. We don't do daily maintenance in how we build things. We like to keep you as, operate, as an operator as efficient as possible, spend less time in the cab working instead of working on the tool itself before you can work. Right. So we have our sealed journal bearing axle here. You don't have to grease it daily. It's got a five-year warranty. Change the oil once a year. It's standard 30-weight oil. You're good to go. Wow. The vibratory compactors, you have to replace the isolator pads when they wear out, yeah. but you shouldn't wear those out. I mean, we hear a year or two on those okay. usually, and that's about it. Past that, until unless you like have a valve go mi misfunction on you, there's not much you have to do with these things. You just plug them in and... All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up from the Falco booth. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time. And be sure to stay tuned for more news and announcements from Utility Expo 2021. We'll see you next time.